This week on the Righteous Tongues Podcast, host FDT, the BX Boy, and D-Bell pay homage to the legacy of NBA legend Kobe Bryant. They talk P. Diddy's Grammy speech and former bad boy artist Mace's response, Lil Wayne's funeral album, social media in 2020 and how it affects the culture, and much more. This is RTP, powered by WrestleMedia.com. First, man, definitely want to give a tribute, um, rest in peace to one of my favorite basketball players of all time, Kobe Bryant. Um, want to give an RP to his daughter, Gianna, the rest of the other, you know, passengers that were on the helicopter, the pilot as well. Facts. Um, we lost a huge icon, man, in the culture, you know what I mean? Not just for basketball, but, you know, for all cultures, you know what I mean? He was an icon legend to everyone, man. Um, like I said, I, you know, I'm 29, I'm be 30 later this year. You know, I was a lot of MJ, but I, you know, I wasn't really able to watch his games like that growing up. Like I said, 96, I was six years old. You know what I'm saying? But when I really started getting into basketball, Kobe was the one that I followed, was the one that I watched, you know, someone who I aspired to try to ball like when I was on the court, man. So like I said, even though it's been, you know, about two, three weeks since his passing, man, this shit still feels surreal. So like I said, we just want to dedicate this time out. Um, you know, just give our... I love for Kobe, man. That's a fact, man. BX boy. Yeah, man. I want to join FTT and just say, man, rest in peace to Kobe. Rest in peace to his beautiful daughter. You know, condolences. You know, to everyone that lost loved ones on that flight. You know, it's just a, a tragic situation. Also, condolences. You know, to his parents too. I know that Kobe and uh, and you know his family. You know, they weren't old didn't always have the best of relationships, but, you know, no family's perfect, but, you know, you just want to, your heart goes out to them, because nothing like, maybe things weren't all the way right, and, and, you know, you never get to completely make it right with that person, so, you know, just rest in peace to, to everybody, and, and also condolences to everyone, you know, who was affected, and, I was also, you know, a Kobe fan, you know, I was a big fan, I really respected his dedication to his craft and, and his, his persistence, um, his persistence to, to just be great, you know, and, and he really, he really just had a different drive about him, that, kind of like that MJ drive, just mm. really be great, like when other people would be, you know, going out, you know, to party or to the club or, you know, maybe come in late or come in at, you know, the regular time to practice. He's there one hour, two hours in advance, staying late after the game. He just just had a desire to be great. And, you know, I think that's something that we can all draw inspiration from, no matter what, you know, we do in life, to inspire the greatness and do your best to achieve it, you know, so... Yeah, man, I mean, just uh, a monumental loss in, um, in terms of the NBA and also just in terms of humanity. Um, you know, rest in peace to Kobe, um, his daughter Gigi. Um, I said the other people that were on the plane, um, you know, from all accounts were all people that contributed to their community in great ways through their love of sports. And, um, you know, I'm the oldest out of the out of the crew here. So, you know, for me, I definitely grew up in the Jordan era. Me and Kobe were very close in age. Um, he was a phenomenon from day one, you know, in terms of being the first player, like to jump from high school into the NBA or one of the first players, at least. Um, and just being, you know, a, a pop culture icon. You know, I remember, you know, the early days of Moesha. You, need, you know, seeing Kobe Bryant throughout the years, like I said, beyond just basketball, 
you know, on the TV yeah, screen. Been on a prom. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, he was on a he was on a number of different shows. You know, um, music videos too. Music videos, you know, um, video games. You know, what I'm saying um, it just it just spanned so heavily. Major endorsements, and uh, I like what you said, BX boy. Like he literally was the closest thing to Jordan. Like literally patterned his career. Um, after Michael Jordan, patting his game after Michael Jordan, but eventually, you know, just came into his own. Um, yeah, he really became his own. It just, uh, it's just, it's just really sad to see, like, you know, the the foundations of a man just kind of evolve over time, and just seeing him grow. You know, like I said, we're, we're close in age, so you know, to reach this level of maturity. And to be doing all the phenomenal things that he was doing outside of basketball, you know, um, winning an Oscar, um, you know, being involved with media heavily. And that connected even with me because, you know, I was a media major in school and to see all the different things that he was doing in terms of, of that realm, filmmaking, podcasts, um, cartoons. I was just like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed. And sometimes yeah. it's unfortunate that we don't get a chance to see all of these great things that people are doing until they pass away. Till they're gone. Till they're gone, you know. And that made me made me respect him even more because he wasn't the type of dude to try to like flaunt everything that he was doing. Like, hey, look at me. He was like quiet as kept behind the scenes, you know, really putting in that influencer mentorship type of work, man, that is so heavily needed in our community. And it transcended race gender kobe was bigging up women empowerment you know just through just through the nba too right just just through the game of basketball you know what i'm saying and um he just was somebody that was definitely pushing the boundaries in terms of like achievement you know that mamba mentality like yo we're gonna get out here and we're gonna shoot a thousand shots a game you know what i'm saying before every game we're gonna make sure that we practice we're gonna we're gonna make sure that people know that success is attributed to hard work nothing more nothing less like in the world where everybody right, right, right now is trying to take shortcuts everything right now in the world unfortunately is about a shortcut you know nobody wants to put in the work no more and this man showed us that we have to put in the work in order to achieve that success man so um as the bx boy stated you know family issues aside you know I, I do i really feel that loss for his parents i heard that he was definitely trying to reconcile with his pops before he which passed probably, away yeah yeah which is and, a good thing yeah. which is which is a good thing and um you know uh yeah man the righteous tongues podcast you know kobe bryant um definitely transcends just sports you know we also know that he was a hip-hop artist at one time um, and yeah. he had bars, you know what I'm saying? It, that that situation didn't really work out as well. But this man yeah. was a big part of the culture, you know what I'm saying? He was immersed within the culture, man. And um, his legacy will live on um, beyond beyond time, man. God bless, man. Rest in peace, man. You're right. They love him in Italy. I know that. And Europe. He had a big influence on European basketball and soccer too. It's, it's, it's a, That's a fact. It's a big loss for the world of sports. The world. Welcome to the Righteous Tongues Podcast, hosted by FDT, the BX Boy, and D-Bale. For more, please visit grusselmedia.com and hit like on the Grussell Media Facebook page. Respect. Peace world, it's been a long, long awaited time. It's 2020, and you are live with the Righteous Tongues Podcast, powered by grusselmedia.com, with your host FDT. Yo, what up, world? It's been a minute, man. I just want to apologize ahead of time for my voice sound crazy. Got a little bit of a head cold, but, you know, I appreciate all y'all for rocking with us. Like I said, it's been a minute. We got some topics to discuss, and it's going to be a good episode. Let's get it. For sure. We got the BX boy in the building. Yeah, yeah. What's good, world? It's the BX boy. It's been a long time. It's a new year. Got new faces, new places, new things to discuss. Let's get to it. All right, and I'll be your media art specialist, D. Bell, and this is the Righteous Tongues Podcast, powered by GrusselMedia.com. Once again, happy 2020. I know we all, almost pretty much two months in, but we haven't got a chance to address our audience. And first and foremost, thank y'all for everything that you did in terms of support for last year. Um, the Grussell Media YouTube page has well over a thousand subscribers and you know family and friends have chimed in and let us know that they really appreciate the work that we've done with the righteous tongue podcast and hopefully 2020 we get a more a little bit more consistent schedule going on but for right now 
we checking in because we got a lot to catch up on. So, um, FDT, where do you want to get started at, bro? You know, this isn't a, a hip-hop topic that we usually would cover, but hip-hop definitely responded. Um, I just wanted to get y'all thoughts on the whole Gail King situation uh, mm. and, you know, Lisa Leslie and those comments. She, well, not comments, the, those questions that she asked yeah. about Kobe's alleged rape allegation. You know what I mean? Um, we saw that Snoop Dogg and Lil Boozy, they... They were not for that bullshit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, but um, it definitely was disrespectful, man. But go on. Oh, man. I, I just, you know, ultimately, I think that journalists, you know, have a responsibility to um, probe and, and ask tough questions. But honestly, there's a time and there's a place for any everything. Um, I, I want to give mm -hmm. a shout out to Lisa Leslie, who I felt like really held her own composure and just really held that man down as a friend, like not to tarnish the man's legacy. I don't want to get on a disrespectful route. You know, it's just, that's just not in my nature. You know what I'm saying? To disrespect anybody. Um, but I am disappointed, you know, obviously about the line of questioning and just the probing of it. You know, it just seemed like it, it was, there, there was a reach to look for a viral moment, almost similar to, uh, a previous interview that had been done with um, R. Kelly. It just, you know, yeah. it, it seemed like like that mm -hmm. kind of line of questioning and that drama and d dramatics, it 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 definitely brings uh, attention. It brings success. It brings money to the people that are doing the interviews. It brings money to the networks. Like if you have a viral moment, it's it's like it's like a bag. You know, you're gonna get a bag off the strength for that, and it almost seemed like good or bad viral moment doesn't right, matter. Right, yeah. right. Unfortunately, and it just seemed like there was an extra push for that. Like, okay, let's see if we can create, you know, lightning in the bag one more time. You know, and you I saw she wouldn't drop it. You saw she wouldn't drop it. Right, exactly, and that and that's what made me. That's what made me a little tight. Like it was like this probing. Like, were well, you sure? And like, let's you know, like, nah, I just. This man is not even... Because you know you are a woman. You should feel some type of way. Right, like, right, right. Yeah, yeah. This man I hasn't even it. been buried yet. You know what I'm saying? And and it's That's just... That's what you call leading in law. Yeah, leading. yeah, there you go. You know? There you go. Well, I, I echo the similar sentiments as uh, d Bell and uh, Freaky Ty. I just think, you know, journalists, you know, they do have a right. And they should ask, you know, probing questions and, and, and get to the truth. But there's a sensitivity and a time and a place for things. And, and you know, unfortunately, the media in so many cases doesn't seem to quite master that concept. You know, and I think in this day and age, you know, the tendency to want to go viral or to capture at least a moment in time with, oh, you know, this happened or that, you know, it just, just lends itself to that kind of tacky journalism and i use the word journalism loosely mm. but uh yeah man it's just it's it's just a tacky situation all the way around and unfortunately gail king is not the only person who's uh who's made her feelings about kobe well i shouldn't say her feelings but hasn't you know i think respected the grieving process the way i think any decent human being would i know you had a couple of actresses on uh, social media kind of you know day the man died you know him and him and him and his daughter and others passed away oh you know kobe you know was a great basketball player and he was a rapist i'm blanking on the actress that tweeted i believe it was evan rachel woods mm. i believe and she got immense uh blowback on twitter and in my opinion rightfully so you mm. know and there's been others you know that have agreed with that sentiment so you know it's you know this is the day and age we live in it's sad it's unfortunate but you know, I think people unfortunately have to expect this to come, you know, and just kind of just don't even just, just disregard it, man. And just because, you know, they're going to do what they do. So, you know, just got to lead by example and, mm. and just and just do you, man, because everybody doesn't have the tact or the decency to, you know, that, you know, others may, may have been raised with, you know, it's unfortunate, but. Such is life. But we're not going to let that get in the way of celebrating Kobe or what he meant to us or the world. And, you know, hmm. that's what really matters. Or, um, this next topic, man, like I hate really giving validation to the Grammys, but two things happened at the Grammys that I definitely want to speak about. Um, the first thing was 
uh, Diddy's speech and how Mace responded about his speech. And the second thing I want to talk about is uh, Tyler, the creator, and how he didn't like winning uh, the Urban Contemporary Award. Mm. So uh, first we'll get into mm. um, Diddy and Mace. Uh, Diddy had this profound speech about black unity and how we all need to unite and how, you know, the Grammys aren't really for us. Um, a whole bunch of shit he said. It was it was a long speech, but um, Mace, you know, he he wasn't too keen on that. He was he really wasn't feeling it because he felt like you know that he was capping. Mm. Um, <laughs> Mace mm. took the took the social media and he stated that yo, bro, like what's, what's up with the masters, fam? Like you know you talk you talk this big game about unity and trying to unite us, but you know I'm still missing out on some things. You know what I mean? I don't have all the exact details, but. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure D. Bell um, will like to chime in and, and let us know how everything went down. Yeah, man. So, unfortunately, um, you know, Mason Beffa definitely felt some type of way about Diddy's uh, Grammy speech about fairness and unity in terms of the music business because when Mason Beffa was an artist under the Bad Boy Records roster, um, it's been reported that Diddy purchased Mace's publishing. And the big stake of things, when you think about, and a lot of people haven't really addressed this portion of it, not only does Diddy own the rights to anything that Mace has done in terms of his albums, but he also retains the rights of anything that Mace has written for Diddy himself. So you're talking about um, records such as The Benjamins, um, records such as More Money, More Problems, you know, huge multi-platinum records. It's been reported alongside with Jadakiss that Mace has uh, or had written most of Puff Daddy's musical debut, No Way Out, which featured some of those hits that I just mentioned. And, you know, Mace has been trying to buy back his publishing um, to the tune of $2 million from Diddy for some time now. Diddy has felt as if Mason is not worth the $2 million. He, you know, the, the publishing is worth more than $2 million, according to Puffy. And he would feel that way because a lot of that publishing that Mason signed over is under Puff's name as an artist. So why would I want to sell you back publishing when I'm eating off not only your records, but my records that you wrote as well? So it's a complicated situation. Unfortunately, May signed a contract. He signed it very young, as did uh, the Notorious B.I.G., as did a number of other bad boy artists. Um, that's just how Puff was moving, and it's business, you know? So it's one of those situations where it would be nice, it would be very nice of Puff to uh, sell back Mace his publishing. However, it would not be the most business sound decision that would like just be taking money out of his pocket you know um so you don't find that greedy though d-bell like you know puff's already a billionaire you know you don't think that's like you know if you i mean sharing the wealth and all of us uniting you don't think that's kind of counteractive to what he said in his speech it it, it it yes it could be counteractive you know what i mean it definitely could be counteractive um and it is but ultimately this man signed the contract so you can't force him to give back what is already signed, you know? I mean, it just, it is what it is, you know? If there was a price amount that they could agree to, um, then I still don't think it would happen. Because when you're looking at publishing, you're looking at generational wealth. You know what I'm saying? Whereas a $2 million payout is a $2 million payout. You know, I take your $2 million, if I spend that, it's gone. But publishing exists for well beyond the lifespan of a, of a human being like that publishing money will go oh, on yeah. to Puffy's sons and Puffy's grandkids. He got a lot of kids, man. Does it, do I think it's morally right? I, it, 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 if you, if you're saying one thing and you're preaching another thing, um, possibly not. If, if Puffy is still doing these types of deals where he's, he's having people sign over their publishing for a limited amount of money, and then he's preaching another thing, then then maybe it's contradictory. But these deals, these publishing deals were signed 15, 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, man, it's business at the end of the day, you know? Um, it's unfortunate, but he doesn't have to give him back his publishing, man. 
He just doesn't. You know what I'm saying? So it sucks, man. It sucks for Mace, but ultimately it is what it is. And Mace ain't hurting for money, man. He's not hurting for money. Uh, I'll just quickly add on that. I basically agree with what, you know, D Bell said as well. I mean, you know, ultimately Mace did sign a contract. Now a lot of, you know, young kids coming out the hood or wherever that just don't understand the business, you know, they you often sign these contracts only to realize years later that, oh my God, what did I sign, you know? And you ended up signing away something that, you know, ends up being far more valuable than, you know, what you ended up, you know, whatever, you know, little pennies they gave you, you know, when you, when you first signed. I mean, it's, right, it's right. bad, but a lot of people just don't understand the business and they just so eager for that, that fast money. You know, you know, I want to put my album out, I want, you know, blah, 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 but, uh, you know, and um, it's always <laughs> the most important stuff that tends to be like in the small letters. And yet the devil's really in those details because, you know, um, you don't do your homework and if you don't have the right people around you advising you, you can really sign away, uh, you know, some major things that you end up regretting for most of your career. Is it uh, hypocritical? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Like I said, I don't know all the details of that. And, you know, there's always two sides to every story. I, I might remember, you know, the whole situation with uh, Puffy and the locks and they had yep. to go, you know, free the locks, let the locks go. Yeah, and it turned out that that situation there was a bit more to it than just oh you know greedy Puff, but at the same time you know Puffy has a history and uh, they are not of being you know kind of kind of shady and, and grimy when it comes to the business. He's a shark. That's just that. No, no, no. That might have worked to his benefit in a lot of situations, but it might have turned a lot. Of, it did turn a lot of people off to him as a businessman or wanting to work with him or or what have you. You know, I mean, maybe on some level in order to be successful in big business, in the music business, you kind of have to be that way. Yeah, you know, ev everybody. like that. But everybody. It, you know, it's they like on some level. You definitely type of person. You, you, you got to be a grimy, yo, I'm going to get mine, and you're going to have to get yours the best way you, you know how to get it, and it is what it is. I mean. Listen, real quick. You know. Even if you look at the situation you know, in terms of like, with the locks, and they went through their situation with Diddy. Then look at the business that the locks did afterwards with artists like you know yeah, J still... J Hood, J Hood and, and Bully. Yeah, yeah. You know where where it's like <laughs> this, right, and he the... accused them of yeah. Right, so it's like it's it's, it's 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 almost like that is a that is a a trending thing within the music business. It's very unfortunate. I'm not gonna lie, but honestly, a lot of artists don't really do their homework. So you know, if anything, Mace. Like I said, without Puffy, Mace's career doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? So to even you have a Mace, right? You know, to even have a Mace exist, you know, Mace has made millions of dollars off the business. He could have made millions more if his contract wasn't the way that it was. But the man exists. He's probably made more money than most people will ever see. So is he owed a couple right. million dollars? Sure, he probably is. But he signed a contract. Do I feel sorry for him in that? In that? regards i don't because two years ago i saw him at um the barclays performing at the bad boy reunion tour which i'm sure he got paid for you know what i'm saying so yeah, it's like true. it's that's true at the end of the day like mm. you know he 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 still has a relationship with puff he has his grievances no doubt about it but the best thing that mace could do right now is probably inform other artists on how not to make the same mistakes and you know exactly. just just be that person that says, you know, I'm gonna find other ways to make money. Mace is a hustler, man. He's gonna figure it out. I feel his pain though. He signed, he signed away his publishing when he was 19 years old. He probably had the wrong people in his ear. He probably was starving. He needed the bread. Puffy took advantage of that, yeah, no doubt yeah. about it. But in the end game of it, Puffy made him a star. You know what I'm saying? Like people care about this situation because Mace is who he is. But Puff had a big hand yeah. in that as well. So it's like he lost some, but he also gained some. He'll be able to make money for the rest of his life as an artist. You know what I'm saying? He won't make 100% right. of the money, but at least he's making a percentage of that he money. He will make some money. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and, 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 and he can do other things. You know, he's a, he's a smart dude. He strikes me as a, as a smart man. He can do other things. But it definitely shows the crookedness of the music industry. And guess what these young artists are doing now? 
they're falling into those same traps 20, 25 years later. So it's like, yep, who do learning. we who do we blame at this point? Like, if I hear an artist come out next year still complaining about these types of situations, I'm gonna be really upset because at this point, there's enough information around. And by the way, I will post in the uh, in the bio section of this YouTube video a free downloadable music industry uh insider guide on how to get your music copywritten published i'm gonna do that for you guys the listeners you put today your money where your mouth is. i'm putting my money You're where my it. mouth is i'm gonna, put, I'm gonna post that link within the bio there's no reason in 2020 for artists to still be getting ganked or signing janky deals know your worth do your research like these artists don't want to read mm -hmm. they want to get high they want to do drugs but they don't want to sit yeah. there and read their contract. So, okay, we know this since the 60s. So even Mace doesn't really have an excuse other than, listen, I was hungry. I just wanted that bread. And I just signed whatever they threw in front of me. Because artists from the 50s and the 60s, African-American artists, were getting done dirty with these record contracts. So even yeah, by, by the time the 90s came around, there should have been more of a hold on. Let's work these situations out. Let me make sure I got a lawyer. Let me make sure I got these certain things. I might not be able to eat right away. I might not be able to get a platinum chain my first year out. But let me just slow right. down. And, but you also got to remember that back in the 50s and 60s, people were trying to deal with white people. You know what I'm saying? You don't True. expect to go to young people and get Yeah, that's, pa that's part of it, D-Bill. Puffy was up there talking, oh, you know, and it's black artists and black music and, and this and that. And he's like, well, hold on. Even in our own, within our own community, everything ain't right, you know? And I, that, yeah. that part of it might have kind of... That's a good point. Tugged that in the wrong way, you know? And he might... Might have just said, man, you know what? Before we even talk about what they do, let's focus on what we do. And That's what we, right. What we can do better and what we're not doing right. You know, so on that level, you. I get it. I get it, you know? But like I said, everybody just got to read the labels, as Jesse would say, man. Read the labels, <laughs> read the contract, all of that, man. You know? Another thing is like, <laughs> yo, how many artists have really flourished under Diddy? Like for more than five years, like like more than five years. Realistically speaking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like how many of them really flourished and did their own thing? You could say like, yo, oh they became a major superstar. They were able to branch out, had their own record label. You know what I mean? Kind of like a situation with you know how Wayne had Drake and Nicki Minaj. Yeah, but bro, uh, like you you can't really compare that because Wayne got ganked too. You know what I'm saying? Like Wayne yeah, got gang too. Man, like he don't own Young Money. He didn't even own Young Money. And the industry different, a little different now too than when you know Puffy and and Bad Boy and them was really rocking. It's a different structure, but all all the artists that left Bad Boy, for the most part, unless like something else took them out, or they just left the game. They've had longevity, man. If you look at the locks, you know what I'm saying the locks have been out for over twenty years, but that foundation is Bad Boy. You know what I'm saying, and, regardless and they of found what, life, you know. And then they Not went the back to Puff. And the rough riders and all of that. Right. Yeah, and they did business with him again. They yeah. did business with him again. So, you know, you look at that. You look at artists like Mary J. Blige. Even though she wasn't signed to Bad Boy, you know, she was definitely a Puff byproduct. You look at artists like oh, Faith yeah. Evans. She's still in the game. You know what I'm saying? There are other artists, obviously, like the Mark Currys, the Loons, um, the Shines, you know what I'm saying, that had other things happen to them that take them out the game. You know what I'm saying? Black but Rob. Black Rob. Black, Black Rob, Rob is actually is. still active. You know what I'm saying? He had a stroke, but he's still active. He's still making music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I know G. Depp, you know, he had his own personal yeah, yeah. situations that kind of make him up. Don't forget yeah. the band, Danny D. Kane. You can't forget about none of them. 21, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but you know oh, what? Another thing, too. Casey. Another thing, too, <laughs> FDT. That that a lot of people, you know, and, and I, I don't I don't have to defend Puff, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you know, he's somebody that I've looked up to over the years, but he has flaws like anybody else out there. He, he but, got some scumbag in him. But, he definitely got some scumbag in him. But to be fair, you know, <laughs> he's like one of the first of his era, you know what I'm saying? And he's young, moving around, figuring stuff out as he goes along. You know, in Bad Boy's heydays, he was in his mid-20s. How many people in their yeah. mid-20s had that type of responsibility to be a CEO of a major record label and to make all the right He's decisions? in the middle of a lot of like crazy situations and errors. Beats, right, you know what I mean? So there's, there's a lot, lot going on with that. 
This man just turned 50 years old, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like, it's not like, if you think about like looking at most of these record executives, like from back in the day, these dudes were well in their 40s and 50s running successful record labels, you know what I'm saying? This was a young guy from a neighborhood that went to college that, you know what I'm saying, within two, three years after graduating college, he has the one of the biggest black hip hop R&B labels on the planet. You know what I'm saying? So there's going to be mistakes that's going to be made there, is my point. Should he do the right thing, give his publishing? You know, there's a lot of things that he could do right. But, you know, legally, he doesn't have to do any of that, man. You know what I'm saying? So just ask yourself that question. Like, would you do it? Would you not do it? I don't know. That just, it's a personal thing. You know what I'm saying? I heard the locks were able to get a a piece of their publishing back. So, you know, um, you know, hopefully the situation will work out with Mace. And, you know, there's some type of resolution that should be made. Because I definitely feel like, yo, Mace is is a lot more than just the artist off Bad Boy. You know, Mace had a hand in really giving Puffy those bars. Some of Puffy's best bars came from Mace and Bethel, yeah, man. Yeah, wrote a lot. You know Mace, what I'm saying? Yeah. So just off the strength yeah. of that alone, like, I will hope that Puff will make sure that Mace is good. But Mace is not broke, y'all. Mace ain't hurting, dog. You know what I'm saying? He probably could use a little bit more, yeah. but he's doing all right, man, from what I know, man. One time for the culture. It's the Righteous Tongues podcast. Yeah, Tyler Creators, he won Best Rap Album at the Grammys. I don't know if you guys listen to, um, what's it called? Uh, what's, it, what's his name? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Ivan Ergo. Whatever. I listened to it. I did listen to it, though. He won Best Rap Album. But, yo, if you listen what to you the album, about it? it's not a, a fat album. Really? Like, at mm. all. Like, at all. It's like mm. some 808s and Heartbreaks type of shit. Like, it's a nice vibe to it. Like, I like it. Okay, you know okay, it's a okay. Nice, it's a nice, you know what I mean, some shit you don't want to call you vibe out to, whatever like that. But it's not a rap album at all. So it's like him winning that. It's like I can understand his, his frustration because um, he... Cause he stated like you know he was he was happy that the Grammys did recognize his art. He just didn't want to win you know urban contemporary, which he says he feels urban is just another word for nigga, which is you know I don't blame him. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but he won for best rap album, and I'm just and he wanted to win you know for best pop, and the whole thing is like yo like shit. Why do we even validate the Grammys, man? Because we we say this all the time like they always get it wrong. They always get so, you, you, shit when you, it comes to us. Go ahead, go Freaky ahead. Tyler, you, I just want to ask, you think that that's a legit pop album that he dropped, or it's closer to pop than it is to hip-hop? Right? I feel like it's much closer to pop than it would be, or it, it's, like, if you listen to it, like, it's, it's, it's really, he's really, really rapping on there. Like, he's doing a lot, a lot of stuff. Like, it reminds me of, like, an 808 and Heartbreaks type of album. You know what I mean? If you, mm. if you could consider that a rap album, I, I don't, you know. No, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it really straddles that line where it's like, is it really, uh, wow, that's, that's interesting because, you know, not having heard it, I already had my mindset to say that, uh, well, you know, I, I think he's wrong, but I mean, if the album isn't it's called really, Igor, my fault, the album's called Igor. really hip-hop Igor, or rap right, like right. that, then, then may, maybe he has an argument, I don't, I don't know, I mean, like I said, I'd have to listen to it, maybe I will. I don't know. It's, it's ironic had, though because one anyway, and he's just complaining. Well, about it I feel that too. Because yeah, it, ma- it, it, it makes you it makes you wonder: Are they even listening to this to these albums? You know, before they give these. Oh, awards? Are they just looking at the faces and saying, "Oh, okay, you know what?" Uh, yeah, that, that's interesting. It's just interesting because you think about all the struggles hip hop had to go through to even be recognized by the Grammy, just to be recognized as music, as its own genre, as its own, you know. I mean, I will beat out Meek Mill's Championship, Dreamville's Revenge of the Dreamers 3, uh, Wabi and Cordae's The Lost Boy. Like, those are real rap albums. Real rap albums. Facts. 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 Yeah, man. Big ups to YB and Cordae, man. That was was a fire uh, debut rap album, man. That was a good album, man. I enjoyed it a lot. I was gonna say that like, I feel like I don't know why people don't get more credit to like you know the BET Awards and the Soul Train Awards and the NA- NAACP Awards. Like, why do we care so much about the Grammys? You know what I mean? Right, right. I right. always think it's been a struggle for Black music. It goes back to what you know Puffy was saying. You know, how Black music has never really been appreciated by the quote unquote mainstream, uh, you know, institutions, and, and I guess you know, I guess to kind of have that recognition is, is kind of a sign that you kind of arrived or that you, you know, that 
their music is truly respected. And I kind of agree. I, I feel like hip hop always worked better as kind of the anti. Like y'all go in this direction, we going this way. Like we don't really need your respect or your like. Who cares? That's that's not the way people really look at it now. Definitely not, man. <laughs> Speaking of which, yo, we also want to give a big shout out to the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Please visit the Universal Hip Hop Museum at www.uhhm.org. Peace. The UHHM, located in the Bronx. Yeah. Uh, me and the BX Boy had an opportunity to go to the museum. There's some exciting Yay. things that are coming up in the next upcoming yeah, months. Check it out. Yeah, you definitely got to check check it out, FDT. Yeah, you do. And uh, I also will post a link to that spot in the bio. Big ups to, to that spot. You know, we need a place where the culture can actually be recognized and put on a platform of positivity and just knowledge. Like, you know, hip-hop is just turned into, like, this, this bastardized way to just cheaply make money off of, like, what the youth are into mm-hmm. without really, really acknowledging what's going on with the culture and i feel like the culture is going in in a really messed up direction because you know the roots have been dragged out man so a place like this where you got like a lot of the ogs co-signing it and it's not just going to be the ogs like they're working with a lot of young artists as well to like tap into that demographic because let's be real you know hip-hop has always been a youth movement it's always been moved by the youth although it's older now we got grandfathers in hip-hop you know, it started with the youth, so it's going to remain there. And a lot of old heads is upset about the direction of the music, but it's not like the music that you like is still not getting made. It just might be a little harder for you to search for it. You know what I'm saying? You got to get online. You got to you gotta go a little bit gotta, deeper than that. Do some digging. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's out there. It's out there. The bars is, is still out there. Is. The culture is still out there, but it's it's, it's online. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's just what it is. But, yo, I'm big ups. Train. Not mainstream, but big ups to the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx at the yes, Bronx sir. Terminal Market. Shout out to Rocky. Shout out to the whole the whole staff over there, man. Nothing but love, man. Me and BX Boy, yeah, shit, we shit, saw shit. uh doing big thing. We saw Curtis Blow. <laughs> we saw Crazy mm-hmm. Legs. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. It was it was dope, man. Real dope. It was a nice vibe. It really was. I love that they're doing it in the Bronx, man. The foundation. Facts. It's a beautiful thing, man. Can't wait to see when everything is fully doped out and then and it really becomes a major attraction, man. So big shout out to them. Yeah, yeah. And everything that they're doing. And everybody that support. Big facts. Big facts. Help out the RTP crew by subscribing to our YouTube page, Grussell Media USA. Thank you. Hey, recognize and realize it's the Righteous Tongues podcast. Shout out to FDT, the BX boy, and D Bale. This is real. Uh, getting the little one's right. album funeral. Yeah, um, yeah. I heard it. I didn't. I didn't hear the whole thing. Not gonna lie. Um, but from what I heard, I did like uh most of the songs. He's definitely spitting his ass off. Word. <laughs> so far, mm. so far, I like it better than uh, the Carter Five. But one yeah. song kind of stuck out to me. I'm a, I'm a little worried about Lil Wayne, man. I'm not gonna lie. It's a song called um, "I Don't Sleep," and he's he's rapping about some crazy ass drug use on that song, man. I'm just like, damn, bro. It's just like, yo, when are we gonna learn about the lean and the perks and the coke and you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, just like you know, he's even even you know. talking about taking taking Cialis, which is dick pills, <laughs> on the on the on the wow. as well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know. Doing all type yeah. of lean and, and coke. I'm just like, bro, like, when, when are we going to learn, man? Cause like, I don't know if y'all seen Little Wayne lately, but he, he's not looking too good, man. Yeah. He doesn't I'm look gonna good. I'm going to keep it on you, man. Little, Little Wayne, Little Wayne well. looks, Little Wayne is not aging well. Not at all. Like I said, if any woman out there really thinks Little Wayne is physically attractive, I'm going to have to really <laughs> guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Your judgment is, is, is really off. Not that, not that I want to judge other dudes, but that uncle looks crazy. All right. He just yeah. got engaged, man. He just got engaged <laughs> to a like a a plus size model, man, from uh, hey, overseas. Well, so he ain't... she putting a bag over his face. Oh, ah, <laughs> you wow, man. I mean, <laughs> nah, but like, I mean, yo, I'm just, I, I'm just saying because I seen the nigga on Jimmy Fallon, man. I'm just like, yeah, wow, like, yeah. I, again, he, it doesn't, just, it really he doesn't look, look good. Man. He he looks like one of them. What's the, the fucking little alien roaches that was on Men in Black? <laughs> <laughs> 
He looks like one of them niggas, man. I'm sorry, bro, but Lil Wayne, if you hear this somewhere, I hear this name, Lil Wayne. Tell that nigga his life together. Cause I don't. The next person I don't want to see in 2020, R.I.P. Lil Wayne, man. I don't want to see that. Cause nah, I'm not gonna feel sorry. We don't want to see. I'm that. sorry, I'm, especially especially if he ODs on shit. Like I'm, I'm not gonna feel sorry. Like get your life together, bro. You got too much to live for, too many fans, too much money to just let that shit go to waste for nothing. But like I said, besides all that, I thought the album was good. Say the least, the um, time, you know. You know what I'm saying? You know, Little Wayne's still alive. He's he's still arguably one of the best rappers um, alive. So you know that hasn't gone anywhere. But just you know, take care of your health, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, what you think of that one, Uh, I loved I it, man. Saying. I loved it, man. I thought uh, I liked the platform song, classic Little Wayne. If you like auto tune Little Wayne, it he's here. If you like the the spit of Little Wayne, the mixtape Little Wayne, he's here. Like it's it's like really like the best of all of Lil Wayne's vibes, you know what I'm saying? Me myself, not really a fan of like the auto tune and singing Lil Wheezy, but um, you know, I've been listening to Wheezy since the block is hot, you know what I'm saying? So to me, you know, his progression as an artist has just been phenomenal, man. I, I can't I can't take it away from him. Like he's definitely um one of the best in the game still. And he the way he puts his words together is effortless, his flow is still tight. You know, he also mentioned in the song Dreams, like, yo, there's like a million little wheezies now. And he's so right. Like, he's inspired many offshoots of, you know, <laughs> that only have 10 to 25 percent of his talent, man, which is unfortunate. Like, no. all of these dudes are trying to be like Wayne, but they just don't have the longevity or the passion um, or the performance that Wheezy does, man. Uh, I also want to say, like, I love hearing Lil Wayne over them soul beats, man. Um, it's a joint called Harden on there, man. That's 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 just fire. So, like I said, I think it's 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 a great album, better than the Carter Five. Um, it was a surprise album; nobody really expected it, and that seems to be the new thing now. Like artists just dropping on Twitter saying, "Hey, I'm I'm dropping an album this weekend. Check it out." And bypassing the media, all of that. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. And I heard he is gonna have the number one album moving into this next week. So that's that's a good look for him, man. And yeah, take care of your health, Wheezy. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, he's at the age now where he's going to do what he's going to do. We don't know, people man. People lie and they rap. Yeah, yeah. People do cap and they rap, man. But uh, hopefully, he's taking care of himself. I can't take little Wayne as a lie about no shit like that, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, man, I like that. Uh, that's for me. Niggas ain't rapping if they taking dick pills, man. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Now, let me just say, as for me, it'll be short and sweet because I haven't heard the album, but I have heard good things about it. And hearing that D-Bell and uh, Freaky Ty, they're saying some, some pretty good things about it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to check it out. I also listened to the Carter Five, and outside of a few tracks, I didn't really think it was all that. Mm. And I'll be honest, I've never been the biggest Wayne fan. No doubt. He definitely has had songs that I like and some albums that I like, but overall, he's never really been what I would consider a GOAT, but he's a good artist, and he has longevity. He's been doing it since he was a youngin, so he definitely has that going for him, and uh, so I'll listen to it, keep an open mind, and see what he's saying, but yeah, I also second the emotion, man, like, uh, take care of your health, man, because 2020 is already starting off in a hmm. kind of a tragic way, and we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need more of that. Definitely not, man. Definitely you not. You know, just, just, Keep your eye on your health, man. Facts on facts. This is the Righteous Tons Podcast, where we speak fluent hip-hop. I guess we'll get into the petty side of the culture. Um, <laughs> Meek Mill and Nicki Minaj have been right. throwing shots at each other on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, seems all this shit started from when, well, this was like a couple weeks back, uh... Nikki and Meek ran to, ran to each other at a store. Yeah. Uh, Nikki was with her husband. Meek was with his crew. Allegedly, he tried to, you know, talk to the husband and squash a little beef or whatever that they have. Mm. Homie wasn't trying to hear that. Told him to meet him outside so he could shoot the fade. Meek responded that he's a boss. He don't, you know, get into that type of shit. And that's pretty much what it was. Um, weeks later, uh, the Shade Room, Shade Room, man, they, they yeah, they so funny for them because I work in the Shade Room. They posted a, a a picture of a of a Jimmy Jazz a mannequin that had the same exact outfit that Nicki Minaj's husband had on, right? <laughs> right. Oh, wow. And Meek Mill liked the picture, so of course Nicki Minaj saw that shit. She went to Twitter, aired him out a few times, said some shit about him. 
and you know he went back and responded you know me did go back and delete some of the tweets but you know some of the shit that they were saying was i thought was crazy like you know wow. what I mean? he pretty much was telling her like yo you surrounded by nothing but rapists because you know her brother wow. was just uh sentenced to jail right 25 yeah. years for yeah, uh, yeah. For raping someone and uh Nicki Minaj's husband i guess allegedly was he was locked up for the same thing mm. um yeah which is a lot of crazy her, her circle not looking too good right now mm. but um she responded that this man meek is you know allegedly uh put hands on her yeah she said uh you know you, you, you hit your sister you taped it you spit on your sister you taped Damn. it you you kicked me in the stomach and then you sent your mother to the hospital and i just was like wait what Wow! Nail kicked Nicki Minaj so hard, mm. and his mom had to go to the hospital. Like, <laughs> how does that make sense? Uh. But nah, I just thought that was crazy. But you know, it's funny because she says that about like a lot of dudes that she's in a relationship. She said the same shit about Safari. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But all I can say is funny thing. Like every every man that she's been with, you know, from Safari to me, you know, besides Nas, you know, they they seem like they doing well without her. Baby, this, you know what I mean? Mm. Living their best life. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, it seems like, you know, some feelings haven't been resolved between those two yet. So who knows, man? Yeah. You know, hopefully they can stay away from each other in the future and just, you know, live their life. Nikki just dropped a song, too. Yeah, yikes. Yeah, yikes, yikes. Uh, some people are saying that this was just publicity, but uh, mm. I, don't, I don't know about all of that. But who knows, man? It, it makes you know anymore, but <laughs> it does, doesn't it? You know, it's a different you know, it's a different what? era of 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 hip hop. You know, social media has really just changed the game, man. Like, you know, a lot of this we, we we I just feel like we shouldn't be privy to a lot of this information that's going on out you know, there. A lot of things like in the nineties you ain't know about. Right. You wasn't there, you ain't know about it, unless they decided to enlighten you. Yeah. You know, I wish it went back to that, man. Yeah, I'll be yeah. real. Like I said, some of this information is just like it's just so inflammatory, you know. It's like, who does this benefit? At the end of the day, they both look crazy. You know, they both jumping out the window. They both looking wild. And if it is something that's just for publicity, what is that really teaching us? You know what I mean? Like, this is the way that we got to get attention. Like, the only way we're going to be successful is if we create some type of, uh, you know, volatile situation. Like, I don't know, man. It just... It just I don't know. leave a bad taste in my mouth but i know for the trolls is the trolls are the winners like it's entertaining it for up. the memes for the trolls you know what i mean man. for the people that you know just don't got a lot they, going they on live off of this. yeah they they yeah. this is this is this they is good this it's good food for them man but for for somebody like myself it's just something that you know i, I acknowledge it okay yeah but it, it, ain't, it, it, it don't really affect me and one way don't or the move other me one way or the other yeah yeah, man. You know uh, what I'm nah, I, I totally agree with that. Rich you know, people problem. Um, Rich people problem. <laughs> right. I, I totally agree with that, man. I, I just look at a lot of this stuff and just social media in general. And it's kind of made me... I don't know. I feel like it's less than being a celebrity or artist. I just feel like it's less than this to, to a degree. Like, I remember meeting a star or someone you admired. It used to be a big deal. But now, it, it's just like everything is too accessible. It's too... Mm. Man, just a tweet away, just an Instagram page away. Oh, I'm here, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It, it just, celebrity just in general doesn't really mean that much to me anymore. And I think social media and just the 24 7 access you have, it's just, it's just like, yeah, it, it, it just don't really do much, much for me anymore. And I just think that's a negative aspect of, uh, always having access to you know your favorites or people you know that you're interested in you know mm. I, I just i don't know it's just, it's just it's just a weird feeling I, and especially when you see a lot of the like more negative aspects or tacky aspects that are just put out there for public consumption like uh, why does it have to put this out there why does it have to be known and i don't want to know that. i just want to know you for your music and or your art or whatever and that's it like all of this other stuff man you know your baby mama drama or getting caught with drugs or mother I don't like I don't I don't need to know that. I don't wanna know that. Mm. And you know, it's just I don't know, I just feel like social media has been it's hurt that in a respect because it's really made the world celebrity entertainment really feel smaller, you know? It's just 
I don't like I don't like stories like this. I just hope that you both hope that both uh, Nikki and me can just kind of stay out of each other's circles and that it don't send into some kind of violence, you know, because uh, you know it's just it's just it's just foolery at this point. And Meek especially needs to be careful because he already has Facts. people that that would love nothing more than to see him right back in the pen. That's a fact. So he really right needs to be be careful with that because he fortunate to to get out last time a lot of people really you know really pulled some strings and really tried to help him it was a movement to get him out so you know last thing he needs is for some stupidity some foolishness to drag him right back to where he started you know so hopefully he can just keep his head straight and focus on the music and making moves and i think he's expecting a child too with his uh with his uh, current girl so he has a lot right. that was one of the tweets that he made to, to look like forward to pregnant him. girlfriend and yep. you know and, and to arguing with Nicki Minaj on Twitter, he say looking crazy. So you know, it's, 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 it's a waste of time, you know. And hopefully, Nikki, you know, she, you know, she, she's doing well, you know. Hopefully, you know, and hopefully everything worked out, man. Just, just put it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the honorable mention report. I don't want to. Uh, Speak about Lil Nas X, uh, new song, did a remix rodeo with one of our favorite rappers, uh, Nas. Um, I like the song. I like Nas's verse a lot, but yo, Nas has been coming under some backlash for doing a song with Lil Nas X from, from you know, some of his fans. That's, hmm. I just think this shit's crazy. Like, a lot of people are, like, upset with Nas because he did uh, a song I'm with not Lil Nas just because, you know, I'm not surprised. Nas has that kind of thing. how he be dressing. You know what I mean? But I'm just like, why does that matter? Like, if the song was good, the song was good. It shouldn't matter. You know what I mean? Especially if he killed his verse. I guess he's, you know, Nas with some commercial-ass, weak-ass uh, verse that we just like, ah, come on, he could have come harder than that. But, you know, I thought he did well on the track, and it's, he sounds good on the track. You know what I mean? Well, his goal, yeah, he was trying yeah. to fit into what little Nas X was doing, so he altered his style, his flow, you know, just to kind of, you know, I don't expect vintage Nas on a little Nas X track, you know, it's, it's, he's trying to fit in and then match what, you know, what that young man is doing, and I think he did a good job of that. That's a fact, man. And you know, like, it's one of those things where it's Nas doesn't get enough attention. That's how a lot of the fans feel. Like he's such a great rapper. He's one of the all-time greats. Why do these young kids don't even know who Nas is? They know Little Nas X versus Little Nas, you know, versus regular Nas, right? Or Big Nas, right? So it's like yeah. now, you know, shout out to Little Nas X for even like acknowledging Nas as one of the greats and putting him on that song. Because for me, it's like it's like it's bridging the gap yeah, where it's like you got Little Nas X fans that now know, oh, shoot, there was a Nas before that. Like, believe it or not, man, you know, unfortunately, the majority of hip hop fans are mainstream listeners. They don't dig that deep. So you do have, surprisingly enough, kids out there that are familiar with little Nas X that don't know who Nas Escobar is. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's just where we at. Nas came out what over well over 20 years ago, you know what I'm saying? 25 years ago, 30 years ago. So it's like you you know, this is just where we're at with it. And good point FDT, if Nas would have spit a whack verse or spit some more mainstream nonsense, then I could see people hating. But yo, homie killed his verse. He really did, man. And once again, it's giving more people exposure to who Nazir Jones is. So if you got like these, you know, finicky fans or people that only tune into the mainstream now checking out Nas's Illmatic or It Was Written catalog or I Am or Nostradamus, any of the albums that he came out with, that's a win, yo. Because now they're getting introduced to a higher uh, pedigree of what MCing is all about, man. So, yo, each one teach mm -hmm. one, man. It's all good. Wow. That's right. I agree. You got the GOAT still spitting fire in 2020. One of the GOATs, man. How could you hate that? Yeah, man. He's still really at the loss of step. Shoot. You know still what I'm saying? It. Sure. Yeah. That's right. Um, Not a lot of artists can say that. One question from my, from my homeboy, one, one of our listeners. Shout out to my boy Darnese. Oh, word. Um, he had a, yeah, he had a question for us. He wanted to know uh, how do we feel about... Um, New York rap is it making returns since we got you know groups like Griselda, Pop Smoke, you know what I mean. A lot of a lot of New York artists have been been heavy on the airwaves lately. Want to know if you think it's, it's making a comeback? 
Oh yeah, man. I'm I'm very impressed with a lot of the young uh artists that are coming out. The energy has been crazy. Um yeah, man. It's it's definitely a resurgence of, you know, New York rap and New York rappers on the mainstream. Um yeah, I'm loving it, man. Shout out to Griselda, shout out to uh you know, Pop Smoke, uh, Hey Boogie you know, as well, Pop hey, Smoke, Boogie, yeah. Structure, you know what I'm saying? Like all hey, all ladies. Yeah, facts. Like you know what I'm saying? Everybody that's coming out right now that's 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 making a stamp. I think it's dope, man. Um I think rap is in a place right now where, you know, if if you have something and you have a fan base, you can make it. You know what I mean? You 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 definitely can. So there's still gonna be a lot of trash rap coming out, but I feel like there's enough diversity within every borough of New York City that will give somebody, you know, what they want, man. You know what I'm saying? Something to listen to, right. I, I that's totally a fact. agree. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? I totally agree. There's a lot of great music coming out right now. And it's yep. interesting that it's uh, three cats, I think, from Buffalo that's really leading the charge. Ooh, man. Like, yeah. So it's a show. New York is more than just New York City, but New York City has a lot of good artists, you know, coming out, you know, dropping some solid music, got Casting Over and, and others, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And there's still bars yeah. out and there. Shout out to Big Pun's son, uh, Chris Rivers, man, from the BX. That's yes, right, Chris Rivers, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dude is straight up fire, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, so everything that you're looking for is is definitely out there. Plus, the OGs are still holding it down. Like, we was, Styles P, yeah, Styles P dropping an album every year, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Jada yeah, Kiss, man, got an album coming been, out. been dropping some fire stuff Facts. too recently. Facts. You got you the know, children, the children so of the Wu. Have... The children of the Wu Tang. Yeah, they got a product. They got a project coming out too. So it's like, you know, you still got the older heads still still dropping solid music as well as the young cats you coming got out. The newer cats coming out. Yeah, but big shout out to Chris Elba, man. They really, yeah, really holding taking it. this thing on its head and really leading the charge, man. Woo. Benny the Butcher, Conway. Yes, sir. West Side Gun. And, uh, Con Conway coming in. Yeah, that's right. West Side Gun too. But Conway, he coming out with a project too. I think God don't make mistakes. Facts. Facts. So, you know, looking forward to that, man. They just they just really putting out solid music, man. Good music. And really representing New York City the right way, in my opinion. So, yeah, man, I'm just excited to see what it, you know, what, what comes out of all of this. I agree, man. With you on that. Well, in all boroughs, uh... Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to do two things real quick. Uh, give a big shout-out to my co-host, FDT. And the BX boy, because we kind of pulled this episode together a little late. So I just want to give them both props for just being on point. We jumped on the line at 11 00. You know what I'm saying? No CPT time. We really just pulled it together. And we're doing this for the love of y'all, man. Um, the fans out there that's listening. I, I don't want to call y'all fans. Let's say supporters and listeners. We appreciate y'all. Supporters, supporters. Yeah, supporters, man. Yeah, supporters. Um, and yo, just look forward to like more new content like coming soon. Um, you know, D Bell Media Arts Specialist. I just started my own LLC company and I'm in the process of getting a whole bunch of new equipment. I'm also in the process of restructuring GrusselMedia.com. Um, so there's going to be a lot of changes and part of that's on me because um, I've been having all these different ideas and different things that I've been wanting to do, but I just haven't had the time really to facilitate it. So I apologize on my end, you know, that we haven't been as consistent with original content, but we're going to give y'all what y'all need. Just stay tuned to the channel. Um, tell people to like and subscribe, drop a comment. Let us know what's on your mind. If there's a particular topic that you want us to cover, we got your back. Just uh, holler at us. You know what I'm saying? Um, this has been the Righteous Tongues Podcast, hosted by my man FDT. Final words? Hey, man, like I said, just want to apologize for the hiatus. Sorry we haven't been putting out as much content as we usually uh, did in previous year. But like I said, man, life life hits you, man. Shit, shit's crazy. We all work. <laughs> we all got busy schedules, <laughs> man. I'm a father now. So, you know, my free time isn't what it used to be. But like I said, we just appreciate and love all the support we've been getting. Um, just, just stay rocking with us. Stay tuned, man. Peace. And the BX boy. Final words, brother. Yes, the BX boy. Just want to echo what my partner FDT said. We appreciate y'all for rocking with us. We do apologize for the hiatus for being away for so long. But you know how that go. Life getting in the way sometimes. But you know, we back. Hopefully we'll be more consistent. There's a lot of great music coming out in 2020. Uh, a lot of great albums. So, uh, you know, it's sure to be an eventful year. So 
We'll be there every step of the way, you know, guiding you through. And we thank you for rocking with us as always. Peace and love. I'm out. Facts on facts, man. Log on to GrussellMedia.com. Subscribe to www.youtube.com forward slash Grussell Media USA. Peace and love, everybody. D-Bell signing off.